So we're here with uh, As Reader and uh, hi, so who are you? Hi, so I'm Tomo with As Reader and I'm a technical support engineer. Right. And, and hi. Hi, Paul, VP with As Reader. And hi, who are you? Hi, I'm Kara. Uh, I do marketing for As Reader. So what's the latest with As Reader? Um, right now, we have a variety of barcode scanners and RFID readers, um, including this fancy gun right here. It does barcode scanning and RFID reading. Um, so do you have lots of customers around the world, and lots of things going on? Yes. So we are in the U.S. and our headquarters is in Japan. Um, and you know we're looking to broaden our, our U.S. Uh, our products within the U.S. So all of our devices um, fit on a primarily on an iPhone. So it's right here in the back. So Correct. there's a system going on right here. And uh, what, what's the latest uh, stuff that you, you, you're launching? Sure. You have so you saw this the last show where we connect with magnets. That's a magnetic USB 2.0 connection. So that's not just power pass through, but also data. So rather than doing a Bluetooth connection like most devices use, we're completely hardwired. So once you put that on there, it's paired. You don't need to worry that you're accidentally pairing to your partner's scanner or something like that. There's no loss of broadcast signal, all that So do you have like uh, stores or supermarkets yeah, who's using you this? Know, this? This is obviously beautiful enough for the front of a showroom, but we actually have a lot of users who are in the warehouse uh, setting or in a, a factory setting. And we got enough requests that here's a prototype of a new version. So rather than having just a magnet, we now have a locking system. This is a, a 3D printed version, but you twist to lock. So now it's still the magnetic USB 2.0 connection, but there's a twist action there nice. to make it more solid for those that are worried about bumping something off when they're in a warehouse setting. And this now, uh, system that you're using right here is mm -hmm. the full speed of a USB, right? Right, well this one's just charging. These are charging and data. Uh, and, then, and then with this, there's another step to it. So this is a 3D printed version, but this can also be an external battery. So that goes on there, and now you've got an iPhone with an extended battery to last those 12 hour shifts. In addition, we took this device of ours, which is a UHF RFID reader, and we've now compressed it into one of these as well. So if you were using a regular iPhone, camera for barcode, and you needed UHF RFID, you can now attach this, and you have an RFID reader in addition to your camera, which can act as the barcode reader. This is a spot for a laser pointer, and this all charges itself, by the way. That laser pointer can be seen over here, and Tomo will walk you through that. But the, the, the part that we patented is the fact that you've got a laser pointer showing you where the camera points. So until now, when you want to use your camera to scan barcodes, you're using the whole screen, just like you're taking a video, which takes a ton of battery. I mean, you know how quickly your, your battery dies when you're taking a video. Same thing if you're scanning barcodes, and if you're scanning thousands a day, that's not, not gonna work. But with this, you can just tap the field you're on, the laser's pointing at the barcode you wanna scan, and now you can use, for example, the volume button as a trigger, uh, and no other hardware necessary. So What's with the laser? Sure. What does the laser do? I'll take it away. I'll yeah, so right. the laser is just a generic laser, and it is aligned with the camera of the phone to point and so you can align the barcode and read it. You know? it's, the actual barcode reading is done by the um, camera on the phone, but having the video like it is right now runs a lot of power, so we have the option to actually turn that off and just see the data. And then you don't have to line it up with the actual barcode, you just need to line the laser up. You don't even have to look at the camera screen. Saves a lot of power and allows you to add the extended functionality seen here. So laser is just about pointing, so you point the right place. Exactly. And then the camera is taking the barcode? Yes. Uh -huh. And it's using the application on the phone to decode it and to send it to whatever application you need it to. But it's spinning fast. Are you scanning everything here or not everything? It's able to scan every single one that passes through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty much, exactly, <laughs> yeah. So uh, this speeds up uh, all this warehouse pr uh, processing and all that stuff? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. exactly. You'll find what these people are doing, like 40,000 scans a day on one charge. 40,000? device, but this is a hardware scanner. Now the, the soft scan is, is something that's been around for a long time. It continues to improve. I believe over the next two years, we're gonna see a lot more of that. Um, it can't quite compete with this in certain types of barcodes, especially like medical, um, 
what's the word I'm looking for? Like medication, like CCA, composite uh, 2D barcodes. Um, soft scan's not quite there yet. Um, for that, a hardware scanner like this is really the best thing still. But over the next two years, I believe it'll catch up. So do you have mm -hmm. some stories you can say about the success? Uh, how, how big are you? Are you in oh, many sure, places? Sure. Um, so uh, our headquarters is in Japan, as, as Kara mentioned earlier. And uh, we're 70% of the sled market in Japan. So we're 70% we're of the what? Of the sled market. So anything where you take a smartphone and put it on a sled like this, or like this, where you're taking a smartphone and combining it with a barcode or RFID scanner, reader writer, that's the sled market, and we're 70 percent of that in Japan, where we're headquartered. Um, in the U.S., we're we're, a, we're we're the small guys for sure, uh, but we're growing very quickly and and globally. Um, but yeah, that that would be the the most impressive number for so, you. So, sure. uh, how many warehouses or how many uh, are you in, like hospitals Location. or oh, where yes. are you? Uh, we're in over 120 hospitals. Um, one of the things in the, in the U.S. or everywhere uh, globally, uh, and and growing quickly in in the U.S. We're we're pre-integrated into number one and three of the uh, the electronic medical record softwares, so Epic and Allscripts. So a hospital can just get one of our devices and it works out of the box because they're already using Epic or Allscripts. So what would they do in the hospital? They would use this sure. one or not? Really? Yeah, you know, the most common, it, well, this is more for asset management. Um, these devices here are what are more used for patient management or medication management. So the doctor has one? Uh, the no, nurse? The doctor is usually nurses. The nurse? Um, and what they're doing is they're doing a three-point check. So they'll scan the ID bracelet of the person and scan the IV drip, make sure the right person's getting the right medication. Or they'll, when they're doing medicine um, management, they'll they'll scan the uh, the medications themselves, check the chart, check the patient, check the medication. Yeah. Nice. So that's the three-point check they call it. And uh, over mm -hmm. here you have a. Um uh, you're showing some demos. Uh, oh, here's this is the sure. stuff that goes on with the hospitals. It is. So one of the that one there is about uh, a medical grade battery. So most hospitals until now only had the choice of buying an Apple extended battery or a Mophie. Neither one of them was really made for the healthcare market. Ours is non-porous plastic. It can take all the wipes, so you can wipe this down with the bleaches and the chlorines, all those harsh chemicals, and that's unusual. Um, that consumer grade batteries aren't made for that. So this is actually made with healthcare in mind. So. Do you have any Android stuff going on? We do. We do actually. Um, we usually do them custom order because there's so many types. But for example, so this is the iOS version with the lightning connector. That's the RFID scanner with the lightning. So this is the same exact thing, but with a micro USB connector instead of lightning. And this happens to be for a Samsung J3. But you see, this can attach to pretty much any Android, and we have a USB-C version as well. But this goes to any one, and then we just make a different case to fit it. So Sometimes this one, uh, for the Android, you might make them more elastic or something because right. it's different sizes. Exactly. And this is a case where we custom made one for a customer. This is Sagawa in Japan. They're kind of like the FedEx or UPS of Japan. Um, and they wanted a device that did 1D scanning. This is actually made for a Kyocera phone. I put a Samsung in here just to show it. Um, but this one can drop 21 feet. So we've tested throwing it off buildings that are seven meters high to concrete. And uh, it, it really does take a lick at <laughs> Nice. So, uh, so yeah. uh, Amazon is opening new headquarters in New York and yes, Virginia. They are. And uh, they should be buying a few hundred thousands of these, right? I and hope they'll tell them that. Every single one of their, <laughs> their delivery person needs Absolutely. to have one of, with their phones, Absolutely. right? Yeah, logistics sense? is perfect. I mean, it, to be able to fit this in your pocket is great. Of it course. It gets, uh, like, um, uh, you get the value back in just a few days. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Being able to scan that much that quickly makes a huge difference. And, and then going from barcode to RFID is another jump that's certainly, you know, being able to scan, for example, five, six hundred tags per second compared to barcode of beep, beep, <laughs> beep, being able to go beep, there's a lot to be said for that. And around here, this conference, is lots of uh, flexible electronics, there and they are, do lots of RFID are. tags, and they, they, yeah. they, like some of these companies make billions of them. Pretty amazing, uh, so yeah. So it's a very compatibility. That, yes. Is that why you had the ID Tech Egg Show? It is. We, we work with all of the UHF tag manufacturers, of course, we're... Um, we're up to all the standards you would expect for both the European bandwidth and the US and, and the rest of the world. Um, and we do a lot of wearables. We do a lot of custom projects. Something that's 
unusual about our company is that we can handle a, a, a custom order for a client that has as little as a 1,000 unit MOQ. So being able to take an order like that is pretty unusual in this community. Uh, and we can turn it around very quickly too, so. And uh, what do you think about the ID Tech X show? It's great, you know, I, I, I wish there were more people here, frankly. <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think the technology is great, I think the speakers are incredible. Um, I think a lot more people should be here. Maybe if they made it free. <laughs> this is uh, this is like yeah. a, what's it called a, a groundbreaking technology that people need to know uh, about is. this. Right? I agree. I completely so agree. Cool there really here. are. They really are. I'd like to take more time to walk around, and listen to more speakers, and be at more booths. But it's a terrific show. Yeah, it, it it definitely should be more attended than this. Yeah, no question.